Howdy everybody, this here is Tommy Sides speaking to you from Mapumalunga, South Africa. And uh, I just greet all my fellow Americans over there in the United States with a lot of love and prayer. Amen. And uh, I'm with you. Um, I'm filming this on November the 5th, Thursday, in the evening here in South Africa. Um, I debated whether to do this tomorrow, but I thought, well, even though it's evening, I'll, I'll do this. Um, I'm, a lot of you know me, uh, the ones that do know me, you know that uh, usually when I have a book in my hand, it's the Bible. Uh, I'm a independent missionary evangelist over here and also an artist. I've got an album out. You can check it out. It's uh, Stranded No More, uh, anointed and produced here in South Africa. But the reason that I'm here today is to share with you this book and I'll put it up there so you can see it says the life it's a really old book this thing was printed in 1893 okay the life of James G Blaine that's his you can see his and there's the capital of the United States see so this book is old I brought it with me <laughs> I could only bring about three suitcases of my life over here, and uh, this book was one of the things I bought. I bought it years ago at a bookstore for seven bucks. I love old books, and I want to just, sh there's this picture, and then this is uh, a little bit about, about him. There's 1893, you can see, and it says here, um, a graphic record of his whole illustrious career from the cradle to the grave. He was an editor, representative, speaker, speaker of the house, senator, cabinet minister, diplomat, and true patriot. So this man, he ran for president. In fact, I should be telling you right now today, I should be telling you I want to speak to you today about a former president of the United States, James G. Blaine. But I can't do that. Instead, I got our, and this book is about his life. It's a very, very well written biography. And it's about him, how he ran for president. And guess what happened in 1885, no less. His election was stolen. And I wonder by who? By the Democrats. Now back in those days, it was shortly after the Civil War. The majority of Democrats were in the South. You know, they were the Confederates. There was still some Democrats up North, but the Republicans ruled mostly the North. Everything's switched around now, right? And James G. Blaine, after he lost the election of 1885, he says this, let me, uh, let me get that page. I got a couple places I want to speak. He says here, malice had done its mischief, however, and it could not be undone. Mr. Blaine returned to his home in Augusta, receiving an imposing reception at Boston on the way. The election occurred on November the 4th. The result turned upon the vote of New York State, and for some days that was in doubt. After an inexplicable delay on the part of the Democratic officers of election, a delay during which grave suspicions arose that the returns were being tampered with and falsified, it was announced that Mr. Cleveland had carried the state of New York by a narrow margin of, get this, 1,047 votes. So, because of 1,047 votes, in the state of New York, by the Democratic officials in New York City and Brooklyn, I cannot tell you that this was your former president. No, he was a great patriot, Speaker of the House and all that, Senator, Congressman, 
but he wasn't the president. He never became the president. Why? Because of fraud, voter fraud. We think that it's today, it's always been. We've always had voter fraud, but you know what? Our country a long time ago should have learned. Man, why do you think most of the world walks around with purple thumbs, okay? Even here in South Africa, they, they purpleize your thumb, man. You're not gonna be able to go the same day to another place and vote. They're gonna check your thumb. You can't get that stuff off. Go home and try to get that stuff off. It's hard, man. If they even see a little residue of purple on your thumb, you can't go to another place and vote. Why is it the rest of the world has all this, but we've never had it? Okay, now, I wanna just go to the next page. And I'm not telling you a lot of stuff that I've read in this chapter, you would not believe. It's really quite depressing. But I just underlined some of the highlights. This defeat by James G. Blaine, that he had this election stolen from him, this defeat was a bitter disappointment to Mr. Blaine, and a still more disappointment to his millions of admirers and supporters throughout the country. Hmm, does that sound familiar? How many Americans right now are crying and depressed and pulling hair out of their heads because Trump right now is in some trouble, you know? We need to pray him out, I'm telling you. I haven't gotten to my spiritual part of this here. We're gonna pray him out, out of this mess. Now look at this here. It was exasperating to think that he had been defeated through the malicious interpretations. And it says here, but even more serious consideration was demanded by the fact that in this, as in all other elections since 1876, force and fraud, that's the two F's, force and fraud. They go in by force, man. They, they do their fraud by force. Even in these days, they did that. Okay, so let me just say that again. As in all other elections since 1876, force and fraud carried the day in a number of the southern states so that their votes were counted for the candidate of the party that was really in the minority. This subject had frequently been discussed by telling force by Mr. Blaine in the two houses of Congress. He went to both houses of Congress and said, look here, man, the people that are in the minority are winning the elections down south. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know the whole, you know, I'm, I'm with you, I'm in, 2020 okay but all I can tell you is man if you if anybody can find this book uh, online or anything like that it's called the life of James G Blaine get you know what we don't know our history we don't know American history do we I wonder how many political science majors that got um, master degrees in, in history don't know some of this stuff and it's all in these books. We need to start getting, you know, used booksellers need to get back in business big time, huh? We need to, we need to be buying used books. And not everything is online. You think, you think all these pages right here, you think all these pages, you think you're gonna find this information online? Maybe, but I don't know, you know. You're, you're only gonna find so much, okay? Uh, this was done by the Atlantic Publishing Company, 1893, uh, by Willis Fletcher Johnson, AM. Just so to help you know. Entered into the Act of Congress, 1893. All rights reserved. Okay, so what I, what I wanna share with you is that America has always had problems with the vote and sometimes we've had presidents that have been in office that shouldn't have been there they didn't deserve to be there and there's other presidents but I won't get into all that because I'm talking about J James G Blaine today and most of you guys don't even know that he existed but you do today 
and this was a patriot. But this man, he saw a lot of things, okay? And yet, he never became president. He was the Speaker of the House. And he should have won. But because of some shenanigans going on in New York and Brooklyn, okay, during those days with the Democratic Party, and they held the vote back, and they waited, and they thought they'd get in there and, you know, they delayed the election. Right here it said, go back. Because I, I, I don't want to go back, but you can hear that again and again. They delayed that election of 1885. Okay, and so we need to be in prayer for Donald Trump. I've been, so you can see this is a, a lake here, and um, we live on a farm out here in South Africa. Um, and so there, there's actually more water than just this. There's like three different lakes this size that, that I'm walking around praying and fasting for my president. And we've been in, we've been in a spirit of prayer and fasting for for Donald Trump for the last couple months, uh, and I thought you know election night I was sitting back you know chilling had my coke and uh, gonna just enjoy watching my president get elected and thought my fasting time and everything was over and then all this happened friends <laughs> you know. I just don't think it's ever going to really be over. I mean, even when Trump gets back in there, hallelujah, amen, when all this goes over, I want to just believe he's going to win this. And uh, it's the, the devil is out there to steal, kill, and destroy, okay? And I'm not saying the Republican Party is perfect. It's not. But the Democratic Party has given their heart and soul to the devil. And they always have. I mean, in 1885, they were stealing elections, okay, in the back rooms in New York City. So uh, what can I tell you? They're even worse now, okay, because back then it was just mainly, you know, in the big cities. But now it's all over the country. And I, I want to speak to some of you good, you know, good-hearted, old-fashioned Democrats that just hanging on and you just, you just believe in, hey, can I just tell you, wake up, please, for the sake of the country, wake up. The Democratic Party is not the party of JFK any longer. Okay, even, even in those days they had problems, but they were basically a lot more patriotic than they are today. The Democratic Party is being controlled and manipulated by people of sinister shenanigans, okay? Very sinister shenanigans going on. And uh, Joe Biden, <laughs> he ha he's already had deals with the CCP and the China. I mean, I've, I'm, I, I, I'll do another video on that if, if something happens and Biden gets in. Because, you know, last election in 2016, last presidential election, I did, I did a couple videos. And the Lord showed my wife a few things. She, she moves in prophetic. And when uh, the FBI, 11 days or so before the election, uh, said they were going to reopen uh, the investigation, my wife saw that a few days before that, and we, we put that video up. She didn't see that exact, she just knew something big was going to happen to slow the thing down. And that basically helped Trump get in there. Because um, I think it, it changed the minds of some people. And all I'm saying is, I wasn't expecting to do a video on this election this year. I really felt like Trump had this election. I thought, you know, my wife said, yeah, I don't hear really any real word from the Lord on, on, on anything, you know. And, uh, and I, I don't, I, in 2018, I got into some problems because my wife gave me a word, and then I, I got a little bit presumptuous, and I added a little bit to what she told me, and... Uh, so I've learned, okay, <laughs> I've learned to be careful. But now we're in this mess, and I thought, I got to get online and share with the American people about my brother <laughs> from another mother a long time ago, James G. Blaine, amen? He's a brother. We're going to meet him up there one day, amen? True patriot. And uh, he should have been our president. 
a Republican. He should have been our president. But the Democrats, you know who it was? It was uh, Grover Cleveland that uh, won that election. And, uh, well, by cheating, by hook and crook, he got that election. So, what I want us all to do is to be in the time of prayer. And if you can fast, fast. You know, I, Esther, Esther asked everybody to fast for three days so that she could go before the king. And I'm going to just ask, if you can fast for three days, praise the Lord. Let's do it. Let's be together and fast and get through this thing together as a nation. Some of you can't fast. You know what you can do? You can at least fast sweeties or your coffee or something that you like, you know. No, no dessert until this whole thing is over. You know, if it takes three weeks, I'm not going to eat any sweets or no dessert. D just pick something. Pick something you like that feeds your flesh and deny yourself for the Lord and, and for Donald Trump. And can I just tell you, James G. Blaine, he was respected and liked by a lot of people. But I don't think there was a lot of rallies going on back in those days. Horse-drawn carts with, with flyers and parades and things going on. There has never been a politician in America that was truly loved by the people of his party and even other people in that aren't, aren't there's people that are independents and even Democrats some of them they 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 love Trump and my wife is a school teacher here do you know that she said I wasn't expecting to say this but she came home from work today and I, I said well how did it go at work she said you know I, I, I've had several teachers came up to me and said please tell your husband Tell your husband, we're we're praying, we're praying for 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 President Trump, and we love him. We we really think he's the best for the world. And uh, in fact, the one secretary lady at the school, she, her son, uh, is a really good young man and uh, big one of these big gu uh, guys, you know, and. He was at the house, she said yesterday and the day before when she found out about all the trouble that Trump's in, he started crying. A young man, I think he's like 18 to 20, something where in there. And uh, he was crying like a baby for Donald Trump. And he's a South African here. I don't even know the, he doesn't know me, I don't know him. But I'm telling you, around the world, in, in countries around the world, People are praying and crying and weeping and seeking God and rebuking the devil. Hallelujah. I wish this was a Bible. <laughs> if this was a Bible, boy, the devil would be in trouble right now. I'd say, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I'm going to sick James G. Blaine on you. <laughs> hallelujah. No, I'm going to sick the devil. Uh, I'm going to sick Jesus on you, devil. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right. You know, sometimes we all get tongue-tied, amen? But anyway, I'll, I'll close this. My wife says I'm good about going on and on. But uh, let me just end this in prayer, and you just join with me in prayer, and let's just, let's just grab a hold of each other. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I'm going to get back just a little bit. I just pray right now, hallelujah, in the name and blood of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we just come before your throne right now and we just ask you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace in this situation with Donald Trump. And Lord, I don't want to get into all the things, but I just plead the blood of Jesus over every state involved. Uh, I think it's Minnesota and Wisconsin and Mi Michigan and Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia. Nevada and uh, Arizona and yes I included Minnesota because I don't know what's going on there either and we don't know maybe even New York New York might have even gone to Trump <laughs> but this is so controlled by the Democrats they'll never let you'll never see the light of day on that in the name of Jesus Lord again I just pray hallelujah 
I spoke in these states and I cover them by your precious blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus and we just command you Satan take your hands off these states in the name of Jesus and we pray that all fraud all fraud will be found out all fraud will be revealed those things that were done behind closed doors will be revealed even on the streets those things that were hidden will be made known in the name of Jesus and I just pray Lord God that victory will be on our side that Donald Trump will be the next president in the United States hallelujah that he'll get reelected in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus praise you Lord and I pray for people that are watching this Lord touch their hearts touch their hearts bless them Lord and I just speak spiritual healing and physical healing over them in the name of Jesus hallelujah amen praise God and you pray for our ministry I don't get to do videos and put them up too much uh, I'm not a tech guy and my wife is so busy but uh, we've got a few videos that we've been working on I got a I got two music videos that I'm hoping to get up soon so keep your eyes open for that one will be of my song stranded that's the theme song on my album stranded no more so be on the look that was more like a um, that was kind of a COVID-19 what do you call that a lockdown video so but we're still trying to edit the thing and uh, then I also have a, uh, a music video on my song uh, dark days are coming and uh, let me tell you when Trump got in and after I almost didn't want to do that music video dark days are coming because I thought well surely dark days aren't coming now because we got brother Trump in office you know but now I can see you know four years up the road whether Trump gets back in or not if they can do this to Donald Trump, if they can steal the election this year, what are they going to be able to do in 2025 or 2024 rather? You know, it's yeah, we just need to stay in prayer. Uh, I'll just close off for now, but uh, you be in prayer for us and we love you a whole lot. And uh, thank you so much. I, I'm glad I got to share with you a little bit about George G. Blaine and just know that the Lord is with us regardless of what happens okay so keep your chin up keep your eyes fixed on Jesus the author and finisher of your faith that's coming from Hebrews chapter 12 the author and finisher of our faith is Jesus it's not George G Blaine it's not Donald Trump it's Jesus Christ amen so let's just keep our eyes fixed on him stay in prayer and we're going to just watch God do some things. Amen? Love you. God bless.